So thanks for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Fernando. I am based uh, actually on the uh, Universidade Federal Fluminense in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. But uh, I am now on leave uh, and I'm staying now for a sabbatical time uh, in the University of Mines, uh, working with uh, the new non-equilibrium universality and quantum matter group uh, with uh, Professor Jamil Marino. Uh, and uh, today I'd like to present uh, this uh, recent work uh, we recently posted on archive uh, last week actually. Uh, about uh, discussing some possibilities of using time crystals for quantum applications and precisely uh, acting as sensors of uh, AC fields. So first, uh, let me thank for the collaborators of this work. Uh, it's uh, Professor Rosario Fazio from uh, ICTP in Trieste, but also affiliated the Universidade de Estudo in Napoli, and uh, Ana Sampera from Barcelona and the ICREA Research Group. So just a brief outline of the talk, uh, I'll just give uh, uh, what is time crystals and perhaps uh, a bit of the historical development of these ideas from theoretical proposals to the ex first experimental observation of these phases. And then I'm going directly for the use of these phases for sensing uh, metrological protocols. So uh, the main idea behind these phases is the famous uh, Landau symmetry breaking that is one of the pillars in uh, condensed matter physics and modern physics at all, uh, where we know that uh, we can have a different equilibrium spontaneous symmetry breaking phases uh, that occur in equilibrium systems when uh, either the ground state or the low temperature states of these systems, they fail to be variant under symmetries of the Hamiltonian, right? And we can use this, this theory to characterize and describe uh, many different phases of matter. Uh, and just to cite a few, I mean, uh, we know ferromagnetic states that uh, lacks the, the spin rotation symmetry. Uh, or crystallites in general with the breaking of the spatial transition symmetry and uh, many other different types of, uh, of phase, charge dense wave, uh, superconductors, dict crystals, and so on. Uh, and it's quite interesting that only recently uh, that uh, Wilk Scheck in 2012 precisely uh, wondered about the possibility of breaking out the time translational uh, symmetry spontaneous in, uh, in the Hamiltonian. So let me just be very briefly on his idea and uh, the first proposed model that, uh, that came with, uh, with his paper, uh, where he considered a, a system that is formed by, uh, by particles in a ring, uh, and they can be uh, threaded by a, a flux uh, in such a way that uh, he wondered if these particles, they could have some attractive interactions between each other. Uh, they could perhaps break the spatial symmetry and uh, the ground states would be formed by some moving lumps. Uh, threaded by this AB flux, uh, they would have also some superconducting properties in such a way that the ground state uh, would uh, generate or would support not only some spatial symmetry break or some long range order uh, in the spatial degrees of freedom, but also in the time domain with some periodic and stable uh, oscillations of these uh, lumps uh, along the, the ring model. So uh, after proposal of uh, uh, Wilkshek, uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, trying to, I mean, to understand if really this ground state could uh, show this type of phenomenology. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, among the arguments, I mean, these particles should radiate, they lose, should lose energy, and this is not really the true ground state of the system. And all of this discussion ended up uh, in a very famous no-go theorem by Watanabe and Noshikawa in 2015, uh, that uh, states, or they show that uh, systems in thermal equilibrium uh, cannot uh, manifest any type of this time crystalline order in spatial and time degrees of freedom. So even though the model was not shown to, to capture this type of phenomenology, uh, and there is this no-go theorem saying that it's impossible to generate these in short range uh, ground states or thermal states, uh, actually it, what we could take from the message that we could take from this, uh, from this discussion here is that uh, the correct context for these phases is actually known in equilibrium properties. It's rather in a non-equilibrium uh, context. So either preparing the system in some excited states that's not an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, or trying to look for some driven dynamics of the system. Uh, and indeed, uh, it was uh, looking for Floquet dynamics uh, that uh, many important uh, steps uh, and developments on the field uh, were performed. So specifically in this Floquet dynamics, your Hamiltonian has some discrete time translation symmetry with a given period. 
And uh, in order to see if it can stabilize or support some discrete time crystal phase now, uh, we should look for some macroscopic observable and some set of initial states, such that uh, when we go to the thermodynamic limit, this, uh, the dynamics of these macroscopic states show some periodic uh, and stable motion. motion. Uh, but most importantly, first, uh, it, it should not uh, has the same frequency as the Hamiltonian, therefore breaking the discrete time translation symmetry. But also, it should show that this is a phase of matter and not just some single spin dynamics. So this type of uh, periodic uh, dynamic here should be rigid in the sense that this function here uh, should uh, not change, uh, should work as an order parameter and should be uh, robust to some perfections in the Hamiltonian or in the interactions of the system. And uh, also importantly, uh, as this is uh, a, a usual symmetry breaking mechanism or spontaneous symmetry breaking phase, this, uh, the breaking of the symmetry should occur only in the thermodynamic limit and not for a finite system, uh, system size. So uh, one very simple model that can show all of this phenomenology was given by Shetanayak, uh, David Ellis, uh, and Bella Bauer in 2016, where they merged uh, two different mechanisms uh, in order to support this phase. Uh, they just considered this uh, Floquet dynamics given by Hamiltonian, for which the non-interacting, uh, the, non the time-independent part of the Hamiltonian, it's given by uh, many-body localization phase. And then on top of this, we also have some, some kicks that occurs at every multiple of our period. So on one side, the Hamiltonian, it, 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 uh, it considers interactions between the, the spins of the system, but also you have some disorder in a way to stabilize a many-body localized phase and prevents thermalization for longer times, therefore trying to look for this uh, non-trivial time dynamics of the spins. Uh, and every, mid, uh, every multiple of the period, we, we act with this global uh, spin flip over all of their spins and see what's the response of the system to this type of periodic dynamics. So what they find, it's this very interesting behavior here. So they initialize the system roughly with all of the spins pointing up. You have a one-dimensional chain here. And then you see that while the X and Y magnetization of the system, it fastly thermalizes to zero or locally to an infinite temperature state, you see that the sigma zeta magnetization that is given by the direction of the interactions between the spins, they show a very slow decay with time. And more importantly, due to these global flips, the spins, they, at, at every period, uh, they flip globally of the spins. But then on once you do this again, that you go back to the initial configuration of your spins. So the response of uh, the, the spins, or the macroscopic response to the sigma of the magnetization of the spins, uh, comes at a multiple of the internal frequency of the Hamiltonian and therefore breaking the time translation symmetry of the underlying Hamiltonian. So importantly, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, if you look for the uh, absolute value of this magnetization here, uh, while for finite systems you have this pre-thermal behavior for this period doubling magnetizations, uh, you see that as you increase more and more particles, you have more and more interactions between the systems between the spins, uh, and you see that this pre-thermal behavior, or this period doubling dynamics, it actually has a lifetime that is exponentially larger with the number of spins that you have in your system. So actually the symmetry, or the time translation uh, symmetry, it's only real broken in the thermodynamic limit as we expect from uh, this type of uh, phases. So Right after the proposal of Shetanayak uh, about this uh, simple model, there were two experimental observations. One is based on iterbium uh, ions and the other one in defects in diamonds. And they follow essentially the same spirit of the Nayak uh, model, where they have this periodic dynamics or this Floquet dynamics, where now you have these three different steps in the dynamics. The first one is the same with the global spin rotations of your, all of your spins. And then the second part, you add some spin-spin interactions that could be either short range or also some long range interactions, especially in the, in the ions. And then moreover, you need to add some, some mechanisms to prevent the thermalization, and they do the same, adding some local disorder to the, to the spins. 
So when you do the experiment, uh, you see that uh, all of these uh, colors are there for different spins uh, in the experimental platforms. You see this period doubling uh, magnetization, and if you make some Fourier transformation, you see the subharmonic frequency characterizing the, the period doubling dynamics. Uh, and important, if you make some uh, imperfections in your experiment, uh, or you consider some, some disorder uh, in, in the spins, uh, this, uh, this, this response here, subharmonic frequency, is robust against this type of imperfections as well. So, given that, uh, I mean, now uh, I'll try to discuss how could we exploit this phase for sensing AC fields or for meteorological protocols. Uh, and then the idea of sensing AC fields is you have a sensor and uh, you put this in contact to an AC field that you want to measure. So while your internal Hamiltonian could have uh, interactions between the spins and could have different uh, mechanisms, uh, the AC is roughly adding some, uh, some external field in a specific magnetization uh, dynamics. So we know that for sensing metro metrological protocols, uh, uh, from one side, to have uh, entangled particles or entangled spins, it's good because it can help to improve the performance of the sensing. But uh, from the other side, also, if you have some interacting uh, Hamiltonian and you need to consider here uh, non-equilibrium dynamics of this interacting Hamiltonian, uh, we know that the system can heat up very fast and then you have some noisy response to the sensing uh, metrological uh, protocol. So I'm not going to discuss about all of the different uh, approaches. Uh, many of them uh, were also discussed uh, this morning and in the afternoon. Uh, but essentially, you could use some dynamical decoupling of the spins uh, using some fast pulse in order to mitigate the interactions between the spins and therefore having some longer coherence time and uh, some, uh, some, longer, uh, some better uh, performance for the, for, the, for the sensing. Either you, you can also try to use the entanglement, uh, for example, uh, considering some fast drive uh, with some strong interactions as well in the, in the spins, in order to prepare some entangled states like GHZ states initially and try to stabilize the systems at least pre-thermally, uh, therefore uh, improving the sensing protocol. And let me say this is perhaps one of the inspirational works that we, we followed uh, in order to discuss, uh, to, to, to move with this project. That was a recent proposal by Mishra and the Bayat, where they, they do not use any fast pulses, rather they really look for a many-body system, an interacting many-body system, uh, however, which has some types of integrability, like uh, they consider the transverse field the easing chain, that could also uh, lead to less heat up locally because of this integral uh, in the equations of, of motion. So as I anticipated, the, 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 the goal here is to use uh, actually the time crystal phase as the sensor, or in other words, some disordered interacting Floquet systems, and try to see if this long range spatial and time ordering of the spins uh, could help uh, for these uh, meteorological uh, tasks. So we use essentially the same model as NIAC with the interactions of the spin along the Z and some disorder along the X and Y magnetization. And on top of this, we have the Floquet uh, global uh, rotational uh, kick operator. Uh, and uh, essentially, the approach that we use uh, or the sensing uh, protocol, uh, we initialize the system in a separable state where we have no correlations between uh, the spins. Uh, we interact these spins with the external AC field such that now the AC field is it's within the wave function of our system. And then uh, we make some measurement uh, at the final state in order to decode this AC uh, field. And uh, the approach that we follow here is actually looking for the kramer rao bound. Uh, which says to us that uh, if we make the best measurement possible or the best POVM measurement at the final state of the sensor, uh, then uh, the minimum uncertainty in order to estimate the amplitude of this uh, AC field uh, is bounded by one over the square root of the Fisher information, 
where this quantity here, uh, since we have a closed system, is given for a pure state, and this quantity here is known as the quantum Fisher information that see essentially the sensibility or the sensitivity of the wave functions to small variations of, uh, variations of this uh, external uh, field. So just to have an idea how uh, these phases could, uh, could be implemented to, to, to extract information of this AC field, we consider the simplest case as possible uh, where uh, the phi phase of the kicking is equal pi. It means that we have a perfect flipping of all of your spins. There is no uh, decoherence uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the global spin flip. And also consider for the moment, for simplicity, that there is no transverse field along the x direction. So we have only uh, some interactions along the z direction and some disorder also along the z direction. And uh, looking for the linear response regime in order to have some intuition uh, of the fission information for the system. So essentially in this case here, it, it's very simple, uh, but it helps us to, to see qualitatively the behavior. Uh, in the sense that uh, the dynamics here is essentially a classical dynamic. It, it does not generate any coherence in your system. So if you start with all of your spins pointing along a fixed direction, after the kicking is just uh, flipping everybody, but there is no uh, coherence in the wave function here. Uh, and then we see that in order for these spins here to accumulate uh, in the best form possible, the phase of this AC field, we should try to adjust the internal frequency or the internal spin flip dynamics of the spins with the AC field. So in some sense, we should adjust the frequency or the period doubling frequency of our atomic crystals uh, to the frequency of the AC external field in such a way that the phase accumulated during the dynamics is the best or is the optimal uh, as possible. So in this case, we can actually compute the Fisher information analytically, and we see that it decouples in two different terms. The first one is just a term that depends on the time, and the second one is a term that depends on the correlations or in the initial preparation of your system. And then we see a few properties that are interesting. First is that the term that depends on the initial preparation is given by the variance of the initial spin configurations. That shows that we can use entanglement initially of the system in order to have larger fission information and less uh, uncertainty for the estimation. Uh, and this time-dependent uh, term here is the same as the card per cell uh, sequence of pulses. Uh, and they have uh, uh, the maximum once we match the, the, the phase of the AC field to the discrete time crystal phase. And moreover, they have this linear term with time, which means that the quadratic term in the Fisher information, or in other words, that we are reaching the standard classical limit for the precision of the, of the sensor. If uh, we mismatch a bit the period doubling resonance of the sensor to the AC field, uh, we see uh, a, a characteristic time scale uh, such that the off-resonance effect starts to be dominant in the Fisher information, mm -hmm that occurs inversely proportional to this mismatching of these two frequencies. So now, uh, what is important now is going for the realistic case, not for this classical-like uh, dynamics, where we consider that not only the, the, the kickings, they can have some imperfections, they are not really perfect uh, global spin uh, flips, in the, in the spins, but also important that we can have some the, the coherence with some transverse uh, field uh, along the, the spins. So again, let's go first for the linear response, such that it's easier to see or interpret the, the results. Uh, and then uh, here I'm just showing the period doubling dynamics that we know uh, that uh, it has this uh, pre-thermal behavior or this plateau that depends exponentially with the number of spins. And if we look for the Fisher information or for the extensive Fisher information with the number of spins, we see that it has the maximum growth or the best precision to estimate uh, the, the, the AC field up to the time where this period doubling resonance is lost or to this thermalization time of our discrete time crystal. So important ju just to recall that uh, this pre-thermal behavior, it can be exponentially large with the number of spins in such a way that we have really a big ensemble of spins 
uh, we can have this optimal uh, response of the fish information for a very long uh, time. Uh, again, if we mismatch the, the period dubbing resonance to the, from the sensor to the AC field, we see this uh, off resonant uh, time scales that inversion proportional to this mismatching, where the fish information starts to lose uh, the optimal behavior. And uh, if we do uh, a completely scanning of the fish information for different uh, fixed time steps, uh, we see these interesting behaviors where First, uh, we see that uh, the, the response is, is very structured. Uh, it's not noisy, and this comes from the stabilization of the period doubling dynamics of the discrete time crystal. And more importantly, if you look for the period doubling resonance, the peak here, uh, let me say that I am normal, uh, renormalized the Fisher formation by the standard class classical limit, that is the T square uh, growth. We see that uh, at period doubling resonance or close to it, we can actually beat the standard classical limit. And it comes because the spins now, they can be phased between each other and therefore create also entanglement during the dynamics that we know that is useful for metrological uh, tasks. So just to put uh, in contrast, uh, when uh, we tune the sensor to ergotic behavior, either making these uh, flips to, to imperfect or increasing the transverse field of the system, uh, then uh, the system lose the time crystal behavior uh, and if you look for the period of dynamics, we don't see anything anymore. Actually, we see this fast thermalization time at, uh, uh, at the first order in the number of periods that we do in the system. And uh, if you look for this scanning of the fish information uh, along, uh, along the system, we see that is rather a noise response. And importantly, also, they are always below the standard classical limit uh, if you look for the, the, the long time uh, uh, behavior. Uh, okay, so if we go, <laughs> if we go, <laughs> I think it stopped now. No, but that's okay. That's okay. I mean, it's stopped. Yeah, yeah. The conference that is in the other dispersions and other parts. You know, there's another conference. Yeah. You hear something close. Yes, oh. you okay. Yeah, it was there in the. But that's okay now. I mean, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so if we now look uh, beyond the linear response case uh, for finite uh, AC fields, uh, we see this uh, new characteristic time scale where uh, the, the the AC field is now strongly settled in the spin dynamics of the time crystal. Uh, and then uh, we see that for times larger than uh, uh, one over the amplitude of the AC field, uh, it's roughly the AC field that governs the period doubling or the dynamics of the spins. And uh, if you look for the fish information in this case, we lose this uh, more than quadratic growth or this entanglement uh, enhancement, and we recover actually the standard classical limit with the T-square growth of the fish information. So, in summary, uh, what we see is essentially that uh, we have these two regimes for the sensors or for these Floquet sensors. Uh, the first one is the time crystal behavior, where we see that the uncertainty to predict uh, or to estimate the AC field, uh, it can decay larger than the standard classical limit due to the entanglement and this uh, uh, coherent dynamics of the spins up, of course, to the AC characteristic time scale. Uh, and in contrast, uh, if we consider just ergotic or non-interacting systems, we would not, we would not have this, uh, this improvement. Rather, we would have uh, a smaller feature information growth uh, and uh, slower decay of the uncertainty with time for the, for the performance of the sensor. So uh, we think that this is an interesting step in order to exploit these phases for, for sensor. There, there are a lot of questions still that we need to answer. Uh, so let me say, we would like to understand how could we improve this beta uh, entanglement in the system, uh, perhaps using some criticality or some phase transitions in this Floquet uh, non-equilibrium uh, dynamics. Uh, also going perhaps to, not to the fish information, but to real experimental observations that you can do to the spins, uh, how this could affect this bounce that we obtain here. 
But in summary, uh, it seems that this, this time crystal phase, they can offer a few interesting advantages for meteorological protocols. Uh, due mainly to the slow heating of this phase that is, can be exponentially slow with the number of spins that we have, uh, to the fact that the phasing can, uh, can grow the entanglement between the spins, and therefore we can overcome the classical limit. And uh, of course, uh, that uh, this is a very robust protocol. You can add some imperfections to the sensor. Uh, this is really a many body phase, uh, and the, the, all of these qualitative behaviors, they should persist also with uh, some, some perfections in the protocol. And given that, uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>